Welcome back to Between the Boards. I'm your host, Drew Oppenheim. The Wayne hockey season is coming to an end as the state tournament has begun. At this point, the next loss will be the end of the season. Wayne matches up against Paramus in the first round Sunday night at 7 p.m. in Paramus. Um, Josh, what will it take to defeat Paramus? Well, it'll take a, t- a full team effort. Uh, we know what we got to do. Um, do or die hockey. Everybody should get up for it. And you guys have some key injuries, like not having Brogna for this game. How are you guys going to be able to deal with that? Well, we'll see how our secondary guys step up, how our underclassmen step up, and we'll just play our game. So you're a very young team. How is that? How are you guys going to be able to deal with your nerves in this game? Well, we've played in a lot of big games this year. We played in the county final. We played in the league playoffs. I think we should be fine here. we got nothing to lose. We're a 17 seed, and we just play our game. And obviously the season hasn't went the way you've been hoping, so are there any changes you're going to make for this for this one? No, we just got to play our game. When we play our game, we can play with anybody. Okay, well, don't go anywhere. When we return, we'll review a few of the latest NHL transactions. Welcome back to Between the Boards. This past week, the New York Rangers and St. Louis Blues struck a deal centered around Vladimir Tarasenko. Josh, can you break down this trade, and what does it mean for the future? Yeah, uh, let's start with St. Louis. They get a first-round pick in one of the deepest drafts that we've seen in a long time. Um, They also get a conditional fourth, which will turn into a third if the Rangers make the playoffs, which all signs point toward that right now. They get an interesting young prospect in Hunter Skinner that the Rangers never gave a chance to. And they get back uh, Sammy Blay, who they traded to the Rangers for Buchnevich a couple years ago. So that trade kind of evens out now. It kind of becomes like Buchnevich for Tarasenko. And for the Rangers... They get, obviously, Vladdy Tarasenko, who's a world-class player, one of the best in the league, could shoot the puck. Uh, he fits right in on that top line. And they get Nico Mikula, who's a big boy on defense. He could kill penalties, block shots, and eat up minutes on that bottom pairing. Um, and you said the Rangers gave up a first-round pick. How is that going to affect their future? Well, they have another one because they got one in the Nils Lundqvist trade earlier in the year. So they're going to trade away Dallas's pick now. And... Again, it's a deep draft, and we'll see what they could do. And getting Tarasenko is obviously huge. He's an amazing player. Do you think this makes you guys, the, the Rangers, an extreme, like, very, like, they have a really good chance of winning the Cup now? Yeah, I think they have a pretty good chance of winning, but um, they need one more piece to f- uh, complete this roster. Okay. When we return, we will look at some possible trades coming up in the future of, this, of the NHL. Welcome back to Between the Boards as the trade deadline quickly approaches. There are some notable names on the trade board, like Timu Meyer, Ryan O'Reilly, Jacob Chikrin, Eric Carlson, Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, and some others. Um, Josh, where do you envision these players ending up? Well, there's a lot of interesting names left on the board this year. Um, a lot of guys, most of them are running on low contracts. Their, their years are running out. They're all older guys with a lot of experience. but. I think Timo Meyer either becomes a New Jersey Devil or a Carolina Hurricane. Um, the Hurricanes have about $13 million in cap since Max Pacioretty got hurt, and he'll be done for the season, so that's free cap for them. And they have a first-round pick and a couple prospects to give up. I just don't know if the Devils can make it work with their cap situation since Meyer is going to need a $10 million contract at the end of the season. Um, Ryan O'Reilly is one of those guys that's got a lot of playoff experience. He's won a couple cups. Um, he's a veteran in the league, and I could see him ending up on a team like Carolina, who want, who's good enough to make a push for the Cup, but not, not a great team, but good enough. Jacob Chikrin is a young defenseman who has a lot of potential, but he's got a very high cap hit at $8 million. But I could see a team like the Oilers take him on, who lack on defense. I could also see a team like the Kings, who are very young, lack on defense, but are a good enough team to make a playoff push. Eric Carlson's another older guy who's had a breakout season this year. He leads the league in uh, points as a defenseman. Um, Probably the favorite for the Norris Trophy, best defenseman in the league. I could see him again ending up with the Oilers um, or Kings. I could also see him ending up with the Buffalo Sabres. They have a lot of cap, a young team, and a player like Carlson could change that. Um, Patrick Kane, another older guy on an expiring contract. I could see him going... Back to the hur- or going to the Hurricanes or Sabres. You could also see him going to the Rangers if um, Chicago is able to retain most of his cap hit. 
again, with a lot of these teams, they don't have much cap left. So it's all about retainment from these teams. And it's all about what do teams have to give up to get more retainment. Like the Rangers have a, another first round pick that they can give up. They have a bunch of second round picks. And a, it's a deep draft, so you never know. Um, and a guy like Taves, I could see him going to his hometown in Winnipeg. And I could see him, he's a veteran guy in the league. A lot of teams will make a push on him. Still good, but older. Um, and the thing with all these teams is they're really, the chances of them making the playoffs are very low, so they're all going to be sellers. But the Blues, they're still in this. Would it, would it be surprising if they don't trade O'Reilly and they try to get someone else in return? Yeah, it would be a surprise since they traded Tarasenko away just now. So you could st they're kind of going into a rebuild, so they're just trying to get a lot of cap off their hands. Okay, so there's still a lot of moves to be made in the NHL, and we'll see how it, how it happens. Thanks for watching Between the Boards, and we'll see you next time.